before we finish today, um, I just something I wanted to do was that while we kind of had a break from the club championship, the I was looking back on the intercounty championship, and obviously Limerick with not Ireland was the, was the main thing come from it. But you know, having these Limerick players there, and what we will do is a discussion on the top ten players in our own opinion um, in the in the championship this year. And I there's a uh, there's an article up the website if people want to get involved and give their top ten. There's a name, there's a list of twenty there. I don't think anyone can make a case for anyone outside of those twenty for being top ten players. But uh, we'll go into that in a minute, John. But I suppose <laughs> you more than me, but for most my childhood growing up oh, very rare to have a Limerick player in these discussions for, for player of the year or even all stars where first and foremost it's brilliant to have so many Limerick players that you could easily have a list of 10 Limerick lads here Oh very much so Jack we, we've we been slagging on WhatsApp on and off and this discussion started about who should be in there and who shouldn't and as you mentioned it's our opinion you know and that that's it, it, it doesn't bear any fruit on any <laughs> discussion further more than pub talk jack like we'd all do in the pub or when we meet up out, outside anywhere else look it's, it's it's a bit of fun as well from our point of view to know our, on our opinions look, from my point of view look i was i was what 11 and 94 i'm sure my age but you know i, I i've small memories of that i remember 96 vividly it was awful to lose to wexford in that in that game um 2007 limerick were shocked to get there great win over waterford in the semi-final a famous win that will go down. That that to me is one of the great Limerick wins that went over Waterford. It was such a shock, and the Rank Kilkenny as best as anyone could run, that run that Kilkenny team. I think it was a seven point, mm. um, a seven point defeat. But that Kilkenny team, you'd look at that Kilkenny team, that Limerick team that's there at the moment, and you know two of the great teams if you're if you're comparing, which is always so hard to do, and just in, in, to see this Limerick team, and you said it yourself, like to be in the running for these things, like I mean. The, the hurler of the year discussion that that isn't our discussion now, but like there's there's three Limerick players mentioned in it every time we're talking about it or anyone's talking about it. You'd be lucky to get a nomination for an All-Star back in the day with Limerick and some great Limerick players over that time as well, playing for their county and doing so well. But you look from like 97 is when the, the back door came in, so you've more matches and so you've more teams being seen as well. And and, and just from our point of view, from the three All Ireland under 21s in in 2000, 2001, 2002, you know, to that team in 07, to the, the minor team coming through, Keane Lynch's minor team, as I call it, but that's harsh and everyone else has come through it as well. <laughs> but it was, it was just that kind of a team, you know, and then we win the we win the 21s in 15, have not won a minor, and I'm lucky not to win a minor All-Ireland. I must mention a minor All-Ireland defeat in 05 as well. Very good team got there that, that yielded Tom Condon, who marked Joe Canning on the day, I remember it well, um, up in Croke Park in 05. You know, and held them scoreless from play, if I remember correctly. I'm open to correction on that, of course. But yeah, and then to see that see them win it again, the, the, you know, that win the twenty ones and seventeen and you know, eighteen then coming like in uh, you know, but then, then then it's been ridiculous since, you know, it's been we've been blessed, Jack, as Limerick supporters, Limerick fans, and we're at matches and we're talking about it and writing about it and doing everything else and talking to people. I just feel honored to be around it, you know. Um it's been such an enjoyable time. That win over Clare and Turles this year in the lashing rain, in the dirtiest of conditions being played, and Limerick in extra time producing the stunning hurling. They, they continue to produce. And John Kiley said it after the, the, the all Ireland final, I think, that it was the hardest all Ireland that Limerick had to win. You know, you go through that monster. Clare came from nowhere. I have to say, that, I'll be honest, I did not see that coming from Clare. Fair play to them for it, to reach the, the monster final. I'm lucky. In that final as well, of course, and and to reach the semi final, of course, it didn't go their way against Kilkenny. Waterford were a big disappointment in Munster, um, but for Limerick to get through Cork, Tip, Waterford, and and Clare, you know, unbeaten, and that that's the way I look at it, unbeaten in the round robin um, for the first time, I think, um, you know, and that 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 that's that's incredible, you know, and I know it was a draw in us and missing a few players, but. And then, then to go to the semi monster final, as I mentioned already, and then you know, Claire had all the momentum going into extra time. Obviously, they're tired, and it just showed Limerick's fitness as well as all the hurling talent. You have to go back to their strength and conditioning every time. A new man in charge after Mikey Kiley, um, with quick Kaelin O'Clebra, um, coming in and seamless transition again. Limerick looked even probably fitter this year if that was possible, and then to go in. To, to, to go into the semi final and, and play some lovely hurling and been really every game was a test for Limerick this year. There was no easy games, really, every team put it up to them. And then that epic All Ireland final, okay, 
you'd argue in 18 Limerick were Limerick should have beaten Galway comfortably and Canning brought Galway back into it that scared the life out of all of us um, and you look in 2020 and 2021 we all know in 19 we'll skip past that quickly of course 2020 was what it was in, in, in December and you know Covid you know and we, we had a half championship last year back to the old traditional Munster championship again you know and I was at games in 2020 Jack you know the, the, the Clare game where Limerick were crowned league champions having beaten Clare in the water game without supporters I never want to see it again I never want to be at anything like that in any sport to be covering games and in, in that atmosphere was just it was it was bizarre it was great to get them played of course mm. it was important they were played but then for Limerick to win in 2020 and, and, and they were better than Waterford Water had a very positive start but Limerick were on a different level in 2021 and that whole year were, what was just last year was amazing you know it really really was they just Peak that semi final or that monster final against Tip. Um, the comeback in that game was was one for the ages. I know people that still watch the said they ignore the first half and watch the second half back on YouTube fairly consistently. A brother of mine does it fairly often just to get himself cheated up for his day. And then obviously, the, the first half of the All Ireland final to me, I, I like, I don't think we'll ever see. I, 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 a blitz like that ever again. It was it was amazing, and then and then we'll, we'll go on to this year's All Ireland. And in the most epic of games, I said it to you before we we started recording here that um, that goal from Gerard Hegarty to me is one of the great All Ireland final goals. The the game itself is one of the great All, All Ireland finals. You'd arguably the greatest monster final of all time. What a year for hurling again in twenty twenty two. Yeah, it was it was such a good year, and there's there's so many players that made the year what it was. And I just drew a list of fifty the other day. I was I was going to do a list of the fifty best players, but I mean you'd be there all day because you're fifteen definitely from Limerick, if not a couple of the subs. But we'll get into our top tens and even since you were talking there, I'm after changing my list around. I know one of my list, list. I'm sure it's it changed, changed around. Yeah, so. We will start with we'll go from from ten to one, and anyone watching can can get in there. Maybe their top three because if we go through everyone's top tens, it'll be loads. But it might be people listening back later on. But I at ten for you, Connor Whelan from Galway. Great year, fantastic hurler. Um, we're going to differ on things, but that's fine. Um, I think Connor Whelan, you know, had a great year for Galway all round. Was the focal point of their attack at full forward. He can play anywhere. You can throw him out midfield. He do a job for you. Some of the scores he got in the semi final when Galway came back level from the touchline and when they kept coming back at Limerick he was outstanding very difficult to mark very quick very gets the ball in his hand works hard and, and he can finish as well top hurler yeah I think I think Conor Whelan is an exceptional hurler he's not on my list though but I think if you're off. picking I think if you're picking a pound for pound uh, 15 we'll say I think it's very hard to leave Conor Whelan now but I also went for a Galway man um, I went for Joe Cooney um, you were talking there with versatility Maybe probably works against him, it does, because you could play him anywhere from kind of wing back to full forward, really. He scored 218 in this year's championship. He was mostly in midfield. Um, I thought Parag Manny was also very good for Galway, Galway, but I thought Cooney, I thought he was brilliant below in the Gaelic rounds in the league. We're not taking the league into consideration, but he kind of under Shefflin, I think he was probably the most improved player. Not that he was a bad player ever, but I thought he was he was brilliant. Um, again, his first ability probably. Plays against him, but I have I have Cooney in there at ten. Uh, your ninth pick, Nicky Quaid. Um, I can be accused of goalkeepers union all the way here, but um, to me, him and On Murphy are the, the the two outstanding keepers. Um, in a Murphy, in fairness, from Galway had a super year. Um, made one mistake against Kilkenny, but came out with a brilliant puck out. They won him a free in that game for Galway and improved immeasurably in, in the last from the last two years. Have to give him a shout out as well. But Nicky is vital to what Limerick do um, on a daily basis. Um, improved a ton over the years in goals. Um, at, at one stage, I'd, I'd argue his puckouts weren't weren't as where they are now, but he's on a different level right now. To to Owen Murphy, even as as good a keeper as Owen Murphy is, I think Nicky had an outstanding year. Um, he's a very good shot stopper. He's safe as houses. And as I said, vital to everything that Rick do. Yeah, again, I don't have Nicky on my list, and I suppose I'm going against the goalkeepers union here. But like th again, if I'm picking a 15, I have Nicky in there all day. I think Juan Murphy he goes down as one of the best of all time, if not the best, and, and that's fair enough. But what Nicky has done for Limerick is not in chart of incredible. And I think puckouts were flawed 
in the All Ireland final. But like, I, it does help when you have Gerard Hegarty, Tom Morrissey, and those boys to aim at. But you still have to pick. It's like the free decker. They might be easier than from play, but you still have to do it. And, and Nicky just does all the basics so well. For me, me at nine, I had Kai Hayes. Um, he's probably started the year well in, at full forward for Cork. Um, and but then it was I suppose quieter. But when you got to Crow Park and you mentioned big game players and, and playing in certain venues, I thought Hayes was probably unmatched up there. He got three in the semi four in the final. The work rate he gets through, he's a nightmare for the opposition, first and foremost. And you, you've seen that with Kildaimo, he's been unreal in the club championship. But for me, Kyle was a huge reason why Limerick got over the line. Um, I don't know, I still probably would have him at seven if I was picking a team, but he can play anywhere. But for me, Kyle Hayes is number nine. Uh, I suppose I'll go into my number eight there when I'm talking. I had Sean Finn, um, best cornerback in the game even with a fella that's going to be ahead of him on the list, if not two. I don't have Mikey Butler on the list, and maybe I should, but I think Sean Finn is just ahead of him in, in everything. Again, when push came to shove, Munster final, Galway late on, Kilkenny, he's just flawless. Uh, defender's nightmare. He picks up all the key men. Connor Whelan's quite a game was probably Limerick, you know, and there's no, there's no uh, coincidence that he was against Sean Finn. He just quietens everyone that comes his way and, no nonsense, brilliant. I think five in a row all stars. You know, he's only second man to do that from Limerick. For me, Finn is eight. I've changed here, and I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> I had someone else in at eight, but I'll be honest. I like going through the list, and there's so many people you do forget, and incredibly, and I I, I know the reason why because we're just used to Sean Finn being being so good. That's why it's just oh yeah, you just think assume that he's going to be. But look, Sean Finn is a dream of a cornerback. Um, any team in the history of hurling would have had corner, Sean Finn a cornerback. And that's all I can say in it. He is the greatest cornerback I've ever seen. Uh, yeah. He said it when push comes to shove. He was marking Tony Kelly at times. Um, you know, at times during that game. And, and he was wrecking Tony Kelly. said, that's all I can say in the Munster final. He gave Tony, and Tony, Tony, look, we'll be talking about Tony again in a few minutes, don't worry. But I, I just, that's an example. You mentioned Conor Whelan. The all are in final. Where Limerick were under severe pressure at times in that full forward line. He still looked at, at ease. Uh, I, it's crazy how good he is. Um, it's doing him a disservice to have him at number eight, but that's where we are, Jack. <laughs> yeah, I think, if you're, I think if you're getting pound for pound players, I think Finn is, is right. If I was doing a draft, I don't know, I think it'd be very hard to look past Sean Finn for number one pick because he will... Locked down the opposition's best player with chat. <laughs> we in agreement anyway with that. I suppose seven, you mentioned there a minute ago, Tony Kelly. I suppose if the Kilkenny game never happened, Kelly's probably higher on the list. But he was he was very quiet. He held scorers in play, I think, for only the second time in his career, which is meant for a wing forward midfielder kind of fella. But I suppose at the same token, it shows how good he is because when he doesn't fire, Clare don't fire at all. And Clare really let the glove on Limerick. I think it's first. The draw and then as the obviously Munster final went to replay, he sideline alone <laughs> in to bring it to extra time below in Turles, you know, as iconic enough as it is. Um, one of the best players in the country, one of the best players over the last 10 15 years. Um, you know, if, if he's getting to not Ireland final, he has to iron the list. But you know, it's it's these awards are generally down to the lads perform on the biggest of days. And for Tony this year. He did do it in the Munster final. He did do it against Limerick in Ennis, but not in Crow Park, where it really mattered for Clare. So for me, Tony is seventh on my list. Yeah, well, well I'll be talking about Tony in a minute myself, so I'll leave that. <laughs> my number seven, uh, you, you'll argue this, I know, but Declan Hannon. Um, I, like, there, there isn't, I, I can't, I, I, even having him at seven is doing him a serious disservice in my eyes, but I'm going on absolute impact on the year 2021. And again, like Sean Finn, Declan does it every game, so it's hard to, to you know, to continuously put put the likes of them in in a top three in this stratosphere or whatever we're we're d discussing. Like, but look, I don't need we don't need to add anything to Declan Hannon and what's been said about him. Just a Rolls Royce of a hurler. I heard I, I can't remember who said it a few years ago, and that was how they explained it. He's so key. He he reads the game amazingly, left or right. I think he popped up at a point in pretty much every game this year in the championship as well. Was disgusted with himself in the All Ireland final when he dropped one short on Murphy. Just, just didn't, you know. And that that shows the level. Everything with him is about precision, and a leader of men, a leader of All Ireland finals. And to go to go what he's done to, to captain four teams in a, in All Ireland final victories just says it all to me. 
Yeah, I, I'll get on to Hannon in a minute. Uh, we'll go on to your six because it could be a repeat of one of mine, I think. Um, Darren Gillan, um, again, I, I will repeat what I've said about Nicky Quaid, Sean Finn, <laughs> Declan Hannon. Having Aaron Gillan um, at six in this list is probably, again, doing him a disservice, but this is just the way the way I've worked it. Um, on his day, unstoppable. On a bad day, unstoppable. With a knee problem, as, we, as we've all, we all saw, he wasn't fully fit in the All-Ireland. The knee strapped up and uh, levels of fitness. The Ewell Aller had a good game. He still scored three or four from play and popped over a few free seven points. Clearly injured for me, but look, he, he may say different, but... Just a stunning, stunning forward. Um, Limerick's attack is based around him. Um, take Aaron Glenn out of that Limerick team like you did. In that, I think he missed the clear game. Limerick don't function yeah. as well. Of course you don't. Um, heading, heading like very high on the list of the greatest ever scorers in championship history. He's flying along that list and he's not quite far and away finished yet. Just a dream of a forward, a nightmare for any defender because he can come out in front of you. And he does you from over the shoulder. Like Dahi Burke, the performance in the first half and even the second half when the ball came in against Galway should be the marker for any corner forward, full forward. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll take on board. The delivery was superb from the forwards, but the movement against Dahi Burke. And what do you do as a defender, Jack? If a fella goes, darts, knows where the ball is going, darts out in front of you, you, you can't play him from the front because if you play him from the front, he's going to drop him behind the ball, comes in, he catches it, it's a goal. So if you have to play him from behind. Dahi Burke is one of the great markers of all time. And, you know, I, I just five or six times this happened and he scored every one of them, I think. So Dahi was out behind him. Aaron gets the ball, beautiful touch, into the hand, over his shoulder from 50, 60 yards. You can't stop that as a defender. You just simply can't. And then, as I said, if it goes high into him, he can catch it and bury it too. Just he's a triple threat. He can do it all, Jack. And you know, as and then there was another one as well, which is which is great to see. And he's he's spoken this week about or last week about um his temper and how he reacts in games and how he stopped himself. At one stage of the second half of one of the points, Dahi Burke came out and gave him an unmerciful slap across the hand and the arm. It was a tough one. It was blatant as well. It wasn't seen. We'll move on from that. And Aaron just kept on going and threw it over the bar anyway. And it was just to me, and that clip has gone around well as well. Just brilliant. But I know you have him higher in the list. So like we'll Yeah, I'll get to Aaron in a minute. Um oh, we disagree there with Aaron and and, and Declan Hannon. We're going to screen this one as well because for me, sixth is Garot Hegarty. And I know that it sounds mental, and it probably is a bit mental. Because if I was if I was like Sean Finn, the number one pick in the draft, you would have to have Garot uh, up there. I mean, he's so unique, there's no one like him. I can win ball as easily, like destroyed. He might look like he's going very fast, but I'm, I'm, just, I'm telling you, he is getting away from you if he gets the ball. He's striking a second and on that point in the seventy third minute of the All Ireland. I want to say, from way inside, he shrugged off. Uh, I can't remember his name. The Kilkenny wing back that came on to mark him with ease and fired it over. Um, a Rose Rice player, I think. Just the Galway game, he was a bit quiet in his own in his own standards. Finn Burke did a brilliant job on him, and that's why maybe I'm shoehorned down a bit. But I mean, he's had our final performance, you know. And you'll get to this. Like I mean, we thought in 2020, seven points from play, like that won't be beat. Then he gets two two, and then he gets one five. And I think the one five was the best. So for me, me Garod is six. But I mean, pound for pound, he's definitely closer to one. Um, we'll move in, into the top five here and. I'll go with you first. I've got Tony Kelly, uh, just a little bit higher than you, um, and purely because of his influence on that Clare team. You mentioned it when he doesn't hurl or isn't let hurl. Um, he he's he's lethal. He just doesn't very rarely misses. Um, takes the freeze. I'm not sure about his free taking a time. He, he missed a couple in the Munster final that were a bit not like him. He's hit and miss at times with freeze. But look, every free taker is. They're always going to miss a couple. And you have his free taking is such a, a defined art. It's very harsh to criticise. Um, a fellow missing freeze, but Tony Kelly is, he's, I've, I've said the word dream of a hurler with other guys already on this list, but he is the ultimate dream. He's lightning quick, left or right side. Limerick opted to stay in their system against him, so a lot of his scoring totals over the last five or four, five, four or five years, like he's gone into 14, 15, 16 points against Limerick a couple of times, you know, already, so did it a couple of times this year alone. Just superb at every um Every skill of the game, he has every little skill you need to be a top hurler. Um, he will go down in Clare as one of the greats. He has won All Ireland, and, and 
you know, from his point of view, it would be a shame if he doesn't win one, um, another one, I should say, um, because he's, he's the type of hurler that deserves more and deserves more and deserves all the credit in the world. And as you mentioned, that sideline cut, look, sideline cuts are scorable for, for at any level of hurling, at any age group. But you take in the pressure of what it was, the conditions of of the of the day in Thurlis in the Munster final and the angle he had uh, you see I've seen Fintan Burke do it this year with Galva several times seen Joe Kenny do it for donkey's years from 80 yards out and cutting across the ball and many other players over the years I've seen very few do it from the 21 or inside the 21 and kept it low the trajectory was low and that level of skill just as a mark of the man stunning hurler yeah I think Tony Kelly is one that you say he starts in the slimmer team regardless of what happens. You know, he's he's going to start in the team. He's, he's that good. I think my uh, number five is the same, TJ Reid. Um, you know, he probably he he probably kind of kind of saw into through Leinster to a certain extent because you know he's he's moving on now. I think he turned thirty five after that Iron Final, but like when he gets going, he's everything to that Kilkenny team. You know, he didn't single handedly bring him to that Iron Final, but he had a lot to say. It. Free taking, you say you no know, free takers miss, and they do, but it's hard to recall a time when TJ is is missing them. He's so accurate, and I think the biggest thing about TJ is he didn't score from playing that Ireland final, but his impact outside it, he was still one of the best players in the team. He just commands so much attention. He's he wins ball at, at top of row, winning ball there. I think TJ is probably the best ball winner in the country, bar none. Just you give it to him anyway, he'll win it. Longevity, you know he. He'll be in that goal conversation for all time. He's just so important to this Kilkenny team. I have him in at, in at fifth. Um, probably could be higher. And I'd imagine you, if you don't have him on this list, your list is null and void. But um, I go, go I'll go quickly to four because I've TJ Reid at four. <laughs> <laughs> um, just just to back up what you said, Jack. Such just. Um, I heard um when they were talking about when. Brian Cody announcement came there a couple of weeks ago. I was listening to After Ball and um, they they had um, I'm just trying to think of it as I think the Tommy Walsh on and did some did Eddie Brennan on and they did someone else on Eddie Brennan and it wasn't Tommy Walsh. But they were talking about TJ and he he blazed the trail with Belly Hale when they when they were winning all earns as a young fella and he was just brought on as um if it's in starts with Kilkenny and there were there were mainly talking about Cody, but I mentioned TJ in this as well where where lads and it was Mick Fennelly was the other one on sorry but Eddie Brennan and Fennelly was talking like about how so many players at different times true Brian Cody's just not coldness but if you weren't in that 15 you were out you were out in the cold and, out. and TJ at, at times was out in that cold and not getting a look in and where he eventually came to as a hurler is just unbelievable. It really is. He is, you mentioned Goat. It, like Kilkenny have had, uh, like for me still to this day, and it's 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 coming tight that Henry Shefflin's the greatest player I ever saw live in my life. I saw DJ Carey. DJ was great. And up to that, Kieran Carey was my favourite hurler at one stage in my life, of course, and plenty others in Limerick. But TJ has gone to that le- next level of Goat, as you mentioned, and is in that conversation purely because a I think he turned 34. I think you're doing him a disservice and he turned 35, but we'll argue that. I'm not sure, I'm not fully sure. But to be to be able to do what he did in the All Ireland final, and it wasn't you mentioned he didn't score from play. He should have got one point from play. And I'm not criticizing DJ Reed, where they went for a goal and Limerick snuffed it out. And it was a key moment in the game. If they got a goal, Kilkenny won the All Ireland. And he went for the goal. You know, he went to try and create that goal. You have to admire it as well. Didn't take the easy option at the point. Went for the jugular. Was key, just key to Kilkenny throughout the year. Um, and you mentioned the free taking. He just doesn't miss. I, like that. That's the he's the he's the greatest free taker maybe of all time, surpassing uh, and you're called Sir Henry Shefflin there. You might as well <laughs> call that. But you know, TJ just like I can't even putting him fourth or fifth in earth. This is our opinion on this year. But TJ is number one for so many reasons for so long. Just one of the greats of all time. Yeah, there's no argument with that. Uh, for me, four was, was Aaron Galan. Um, I you had him at six. That's not, so, not much of a difference. I just thought Galan was the harder year coming into that Ireland final. He was well marked by Hugh Lawler, who deserves the shout for for this list. I'm assuming he's not making your top three, but um, Galan, you know, you talk about there's so many things you talk about. Like you, you hardly mentioned Tipperary, and you give so many examples. But you hardly mentioned Tipperary, the the two goals he got there. You know, just 
you can't, as you said so many times, unmarkable from behind, in front, from the side. And against Waterford then, you know, a couple of weeks beforehand, it was all out in front. He got 13 that day, you know, and he, he killed what Tipperary goals, but he got Waterford with his points. Um, a goal against Cork as well. goal against Cork. And I think that's added into his game. Before he would have seen Aaron, he was looking for the roof of the net. And I think he referred to it in that, that he's going lower now it's, as you're a goalie. You would much rather him go that's high because it yeah. <laughs> looks better first and foremost if you save it. But it is it is easier because you can judge the trajectory of the ball. It might, you mightn't stop it, but you can judge it to an extent. So I think Aaron is more lethal, if at all possible. As you said, he is he is Lemmy's inside forward line. It, it comes through him. Um, was in there for the final and still scored, scored three from play. And it was a bad day for him, scoring three from play. You know, So for me, Aaron is four because he was hurt earlier for me going into the game. Does it misses out on it. Well, probably will miss out on it, but uh, still deserves to be in the top four. Uh, my number three, you had him as well. You had him at seventh. I have him at three. Declan Hannon. I think a lot of players in this list do um, a lot of things that are very noticeable. I think Declan just goes under the radar. Um, you mentioned his points, ability, but as a leader, that point against Claire that we thought would win the game, you know, I thought in the, in the Iron final, he was just so good. Just the ball is like a magnet him back there. Never makes the wrong decision. Always finds his man good for a score. The only game that we've lost in the last five years was again Kenny. He was injured at half time. You know, I think that like we talk about Tony Kelly when he's out there. That was the only time. Thankfully, we're out Declan and Limerick lost the game. So for me, so consistent, hard to fault any part of his game, especially this year. Getting seems to be getting better with age. I know he's uh, past thirty now, but. Captain, leader, legend, I just have to have in my top three. You? I, I can't argue anything you said there. Declan could, could be one on this list. Um, as well, you mentioned the All-Ireland final, just to finish on Declan. Probably his greatest performance for Limerick, I'd argue. Yeah. All the he was sensational and just different level at times. I've gone three, Barry Nash. Um, in the running for hurl of the year, up to probably the semi-final, and did nothing wrong in semi-final or final. I'm not saying that. It's just... Other players just jumped to a different level themselves. Has redefined um, the position of cornerback uh, with obviously great help from John Kiley and Paul Kinnerk. And as he mentions himself, several other Limerick players that have helped him transition in, uh, into a defender when he defends. He's an option for a sharp puck out. His delivery inside, he can come up at a point. He can mark players. His ball winning ability in the air. Barry Nash was absolutely everything as a hurler. He had it when he was a corner forward or full forward. I remember one stage him playing full forward and it looked like John Kiley was building his team around Barry. Didn't work out that way. Barry then was off the seat team for a year, came back in 19 to replace Declan Hannon, as you mentioned, at half time at wing back. And we all going, what the hell is going on here? I think I remember him scoring in that game against Kilkenny as well. Gives that option in 2020. He was a shoe in for wing back uh, that Limerick team. Absolute shoe in. Um, his league performance was, was stunning. Injuries is what happened to move Dan Morrissey um, and him back into the full back line. And you, you would never move Barry Nash away from there again. Just a supreme hurler. I think he's playing full forward for South Liberties in the senior championship. Um, he'll do damage there as well, you can be sure. Um, for As an out and out hurler, um, and Declan Hand is in the same boat as this. You could put Barry Nash anywhere in the park and you're going to get value from him. He has had a sensational 2021. He's had an even better 2022. And God knows what's in store for him in 2023. Yeah, super player. I'll get to him. Yeah. Uh, second runner-up for you. Gerald Hegarty. Um, you have him. What number did you have him? Eight, was it? Six. Seven? Six. Six. All right, sorry. Six. I, just, I wouldn't do that to him. I said I'd check. Um, <laughs> You mentioned, I, like, I'm, I'm going to go different here with this. Um, for me, at times this year, Gerald was getting a raw deal. I'm not talking about the Galway sending off because the merits of that are the merits of that uh, in the league. Um, championship against Cork probably wasn't at his best. Um, go through the tip game. You, you, you'd say the same at Waterford um, and tip probably wasn't at his best. couple of points here and there. At a clear game in Ennis, I think, was the defining moment of Gerard Higarty's year, getting the sent off. Um, purely because we all know how ridiculous it was, and I'm not going to go down that road because we all, anyone in Limerick, you can argue it all day long that he's been looking for three years. That's absolute cod swallop and rubbish because you, you, what happens on the day is different to anything that happens in the past and whatever. But 
that goal against Clare in the Munster final, like just very few players on earth have ever been able to have that kind of skill and awareness. And it's the awareness for me that really was was, was unbelievable. And you know, it was it, it was at a vital time because Clare were, were were kind of were taken off at that stage. Just sensational. You you mentioned in the semi final then, um, Fintan Burke. Had a great game in him. But anyone that Mark Garrow this year, in my eyes, I'm open to correction, was getting away with blue murder. Garrow couldn't buy oh. it. He just couldn't buy a free in any game that was played. And and, and, and I believe referees targeted him. I give absolute credit to Cullum Lyons in the All-Ireland final. The man who sent him off in the in the group game that he let he let Garrow play is what I'm saying. As in anyone that was marking him. Paddy Deegan did everything he could to try and stop Garrow in the All-Ireland final. Just wasn't able. I don't think Zeus himself from the gods could have stopped Carol Higgerty in that All Ireland final. You said it the 1-5. There were scores that day. Every score he got that day outdid each other for me. The goal early on, he did it in 2021 as well, early in the All Ireland final. Um, the goal, I, I don't think I've seen a better goal in the All Ireland final. That sounds something like I just to beat on Murphy from that angle, number one, is, is, is sensational. Then the, the then you look back at the replay, like a, a lot of people to me around me at the game said, "Geez, like Owen Murphy made a mistake or something." Go, no, no, he didn't. He really didn't. Watch the replay, and it was in the in postage stamp. You hear soccer terms the whole time that he put it on a postage stamp, a pass or whatever. That could not have been placed in a better position. And I was talking to his father recently um, about just the goal. He said he should have put it over the bar. <laughs> you know, that's the type of thing you're looking at that angle. He's gone, he shrugged off his marker and he goes off balance. For most of us, we'd say it's off balance. And he produces a shot, a thunderbolt as well. It wasn't as if it was placed with just placement for the sake of placing it. It was put into the stratosphere. And then he comes up with the point after point. And as you mentioned, then I think it was Blanchfield that had come on at that stage that. Um, he just shrugged him off with ease and then sends it over. And it was just a badly needed score. And it just set, settled him like a bit. And ah, look, it's look, this is arbitrary between us, of course. But like the, we, we talked, you talked about Kyle Hayes at Croke Park a while ago. And Gerard is one of them. Look, he saved his best performances now two years running and, and, and probably three years running in All Ireland finals. But he had a great 2020 full stop in every game. But he saved, like you, you said a while ago, seven points in 2020, 2-2 last year and 1-5. And the 1-5 this year was better than anything he's done. And that in the yeah. All-Ireland final, for a lad who couldn't make the Limerick minor team and what he's done and what he's become, couldn't, sorry, make the Limerick minor panel, I, I, I led in, in when, when he was 18, uh, you know, for what he's achieved and for where he's come from, stunning. Yeah, I suppose he's an example more than anything to players that, you know, everyone doesn't develop at the same time that, you know, you can make this this great leap. And I do I really value your point. Sorry, sorry to cut across you. Glenn Junior hurling too with his club. You know, not every not every player will, will continue. Some players maybe if they got a little bit of a a head on them and say, oh, I want to play senior hurling now as well. That may happen down the road with Gerard. I don't think so though. He's 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 St. Patrick's through and through and you know he's stuck stuck to his guns with that and his brother dear did the same and it's fantastic to see him last week signing going down to an awards night out in the field with the young lads and young girls down in St. Patrick's spending hours there signing autographs and a mark of all is these Limerick lads it has to be said as well yeah <laughs> there's a mark of all others and your point there and he's he's not really ref fairly you know just because he's unfairly like physically gifted he isn't but he still manages to find a way and yeah claire was a turning point and he was imperious from there on in but um i'm gonna go with my second because i think we're gonna differ here because i've changed my mind um, and i think i have your number one i'm gone for dermot burns which is yeah i can see by your reaction i genuinely <laughs> i genuinely haven't seen anyone's team that don't have dermot as her of the year and that's perfectly fair um Broke the record for scoring for defender. Didn't put a foot wrong all year. Did he score? Was it not? Was it six points the first day and nine the second day? Or no, nine against Tipperary. You know, like I mean, the long range frees that were so vital in Crop Park. You know, always scores in crucial times. And I, I thought his free taking, maybe coming into twenty twenty two, was sometimes erratic. Not always. You know, sometimes. But I find if if you missed the first one, that you you could be in trouble. But this year he was just on the money every single time. His defensive work doesn't really get 
the credit because everyone's pointing to the scoring records and, and you could talk about more because I imagine he's your, your number one. I don't give it away, but <laughs> I'm guessing from the list I'm looking at here. But he had Tony Kelly in Ennis for a while and I'd say Tony maybe had 15 or 17 or 16 by the time he, he made his way over to, to Dermot and Dermot fairly shot him down and he also had Tony Kelly or he also had TJ for company for a while in the other and final. But um, yeah, I even slipped in the second here, but I'll let you talk because I'd imagine he is. Yep, yeah, you're right. He is my number one. Um, a close call. I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way: between my top three of Dear McGarrod and Barry, nothing between the three. I, I have to add that as well. And I, I know you're in the same boat with your top three. It's very difficult between these Limerick lads. I've gone for Dear Mid, um this year. At times, um, you mentioned his free taking. He's 36 points this year in the championship. Right? He's playing right wing back. Against Cork, Waterford and Tipperary, Limerick weren't at their races in the early stages. Um, and Dearman's points, certainly against Cork and Tip early on, were vital to Limerick. And the same against Clare and Ennis. And who got the equalising point in the, in the group game, the last long-range free of the game? It was Dearman. Um, that's, that's, that's one aspect. That's the free-taking aspect. He got one of the greatest scores I've ever seen in my life. It was a real killer blow against Kilkenny and Dollar. If it wasn't a killer blow, it was first half and there was plenty of time left. But to catch a puck out is, is, is a huge thing anyway for any halfback. It's a real lift for a team. And then to just sidestep a fellow who's come to tackle you and then send it over from over 100 yards with the angle was just, I mean, it, it took my breath away watching. I went, Jesus, I said, that's that's ridiculous. Like That's that's fantasy hurling type of stuff. Like And he does it time and time again for Limerick. But you hit on something that he doesn't get credit for. And at times it has been arguably a weakness, his, his defending has come on leaps and bounds in the last in the last two years for me, um, where he's a shoe in for, for an all-star last year and this year. And I think that may have counted against him in years gone by, but I think his defending has come up onto an unreal level. And when you have that threat, when you're able to catch puck outs, opposition puck outs, when you're able to distribute like he does, you give a, the, the ball for, um, I think it was Jamie Flanagan's goal in Taran Gillan last year. It was a, an extra set of a pass. He has that strike a strike of a ball that's just as pure as you get when he does hit it. Um, defending, just so key to Limerick this year. When Limerick were down, we had a with Keane maybe last year um, in that Munster final when Limerick were really in trouble. It was Keane they went to. For me this year, it was Dermot. And, you know, it's it's whatever's in the water up in Patrick's well at times to produce the hurlers they produced in a long, long time for Limerick. Over a long, long time, I should say, you know. At the moment, you have the three you have in Aaron, Dearman, and Keane, unfortunately, out injured, obviously. But I think Dearman was the go-to man for Limerick this year. You mentioned his free-taking can be erratic, and at times it has been over. But in 2022, it's just gone to a new a new level for me. Uh, Shoeing for hurler of the year. I don't, I've heard people throwing other names around, and your number one will be one of them. Um, and Aaron Galan's been mentioned. Your has been mentioned. But for me, hurler of the year, all-star. Number one on my list, number two on yours, three on yours, but whatever. Uh, just a great year for Dermid and for me, you know, the best hurler in the country this year. Yeah, it, it is. It's very hard to argue. <laughs> Dear Burns, number one. But <laughs> I think I want to do it. I probably, I probably talk myself out of it as I, as I talk about it. But um, as you said, it's very hard to separate these limit points. My one, two, well, my third, Hannon. My second was Dermid. First for me was Barry Nash. Um. You know, I suppose where he's come from, I suppose, and probably taking into consideration as well. And you went through that journey from an underage forward to um, he's settling the wing back to he's the wing back to he has to go in corner back to he's the corner back alongside John Finn, obviously. Um, but I just thought from the word go this year, Barry, and like Dermot, you know, he's an attacking kind of player. Dermot's obviously more of a natural wing back, but Barry's a forward. Thought he's defending this year really came on against Waterford. There was a couple of blocks back to back. Um, I don't remember him getting beat for any ball really. I top loan in Turles. Um, he was really good in the Munster final. I thought a lot came through him more often than not. If Nicky is going short, he's going to Barry. He's given a lot of responsibility, and you know how good Limerick's puck outs are. So a lot of that is coming through Barry. He scored four points this year from quarterback. You know, which it should be fairly illegal. Um, so calm on the ball, very rarely lo loses, doesn't do things wrong, and he just gives the team an extra dimension because so often he breaks the line or he's an extra attacker when he needs to be. Um, and from where he's come from, the 
on the periphery of the team, as you said, in 18 to, you know, arguably one of the keys to this team. I don't think Darren Burns put a foot wrong. I don't think Nash put a foot wrong. I said to you I'd do it live. <laughs> this is the one I'm going for. A one-two punch of Barry Nash and Darren Burns. But you could argue either way. But I don't think there's any real, because there's no wrong answers in this. This is just our opinion. As we said, we're blessed to have these Limerick lads as role models for not only us going to games, but sure the, the, the children out there are, are so lucky. Um, you know, my childhood, your childhood was riddled in all Ireland final losses, unfortunately, whereas the, the young people today have, have these role models. That's our list. Um, you know, if you agree with them, lovely. If you don't, that's fair enough. Everyone has their, their own ideas um on these things. But we'll know more when the All Stars come. I'd imagine our ten that we both named, I think we have 14 players there. You'd imagine they'll all be there, thereabouts for All Star 